can I do to make my money work for me? How can my money earn more for me? What is the way that I can increase my savings? Well, all these questions have bothered most of us. In fact, I'm told many of these uh, questions are now being grappled by the youth even as they start earning their first salary. This in a country where financial planning is just about taking off but financial planners are everywhere we've all encountered them and in fact students are now taking it up as a serious profession as well here's how you can get into it wall street nysc the lal street bsc numbers graph shares futures options blue chip mid cap small cap risk analysis investment planning retirement planning financial planning welcome to the world of finance we all want to invest wisely and see our money grow and that's where a financial planner or advisor steps in if you understand the current regulations what has happened in last year on october this financial advisor regulation which was we were waiting for last 10 years has finally come in now there that person has to clearly tell whether he is an advisor or a distributor and in case of an advisor he needs to have certain amount of qualification to be called an advisor and he needs to carry a license to give advice and one of the components of that is financial planning regulations and and cfp is a is a like the topmost uh, you know icon for that crunch analyze process numbers you may but if you're looking at a career in financial planning and want people to take your proficiency with money matters any more seriously you should look at acquiring a cfp certification awarded by fpsb the cfp mark is a global certification which uh, kind of certifies that this individual has gone through a process of extensive education examination is bound by a certain system of ethics and is a professional in the retail finance space who puts the interest of the consumers before his own there are various ways to get the certification if financial planning is your calling there are two ways in which a student can become a cfp a certified financial planner one is through the education route you can uh, enroll with an education provider there are 40 of them with 150 centers across the country and they will have courseware they will have classes and you uh, you know enroll in that you pay whatever it takes and you go through a series of five examinations so you have to clear five fairly tough uh, papers to become a cfp certificate goes without saying that a cfp is not an easy certification to earn intensive study is needed before the certification can be yours modules in cfp which includes uh, introduction to financial planning which is about basic simple mathematics about <coughs> finance because as you talk about finance number crunching is one of the first things that comes to the mind then coming on to uh, risk analysis and insurance planning and insurance is an integral part while we are managing the client's portfolio we need to tell them educate them how they can plan their finances better and manage their risk and then moving on to investment planning moving on to retirement planning talking about the taxation in the client's portfolios and then finally moving on to the advanced financial planning which is actually incubation of lot of case studies of real time nature and complexity about the client so we include all those six modules But what if you are already working in the industry and want to take up an advisory role or want to add to your impressive list of certifications there must be a quicker way to get the certification There is something else called a challenge status where finance professionals so you know there could be that there is a chartered accountant a, a person who's done a CFA or simply a finance postgraduate who believe that this certification would help them in their work whether it is financial planning or simply doing uh, you know being a professional in the financial sector for their for them there is a challenge status where they can fast track their process of becoming a certificate because they would have the 3 years experience skirting taxation insurance retirement and estate planning a career in financial planning requires 
not just the understanding of various such fields but also requires one to be good with people two things uh, some of the things which are really important including the trust that the financial planner commands from the client and secondly the technical competence both play a very important role because as we talk about managing somebody's money it is it is required that somebody can believe in you in your advisory so if you can prove that you have the ability to make money for and earn for your clients they may never be a looking back in new delhi with camera person aj joseph and abhishek singh kriti mathur for ndi tv Right. So, what does it take to get into this course? We're going to get into that with our expert Mahesh Sharma in just a bit. But let's just hear from some students who are pursuing this course on what they find challenging and what is the most exciting thing about becoming a financial planner or at least studying to become one. We are at International College of Financial Planning, and we are joined by a bunch of students who are studying two different financial planning courses: Postgraduate Diploma in Financial Planning or PGDFP, and MBA Financial Planning. Let's hear it from them. what is it that they are studying and what are their future plans so what are you studying yeah hi i'm studying mba fp and it is a two year integrated program uh, in which after first year we'll be given the diploma of the financial planning your reasoning behind going for uh, mba in financial planning because i wanted to make a career in banking and bfsi industry which is banking and financial services industry and so uh, the de demand of the bfsi industry is the typical depth knowledge of finance and financial planning itself what about you are you interested really interested in earning a cfp eventually or you would rather start working see in the initial stage i wasn't being from a business family you know studying was the last thing on our agenda it was just you know how to expand your work and everything then uh, one day i had a talk with mr bajaj and he you know briefed out the course to me and the details and stuff about it so i was like you know may as well just give it a try so i thought may as well you know do my pgdfp and mba first and alongside that if it interests me i'll do cfp along with that so is it interesting you as of now as of now yes okay I hope it does in the future as well but as of now the current modules which we guys have done that does interest me. We also have someone with us who has cleared three modules of CFP certification. Let's hear it from him how difficult was it or how easy it was for him. Uh aapne teen modules clear kar le kar liye hain CFP ke. Uh to aapke hisab se aur aapne college exams bhi diye hi honge. To aapke hisab se zyada difference hai difficulty level mein ya lagbhag ek hi level ki difficulty hai. Ah college exams to easy hai. बट जो सी एफ ई का लेवल है वो काफ़ी टफ है मीन्स जिसके न्यूमेरिकल्स ज़्यादा स्ट्रॉग नहीं होंगे एटलीस्ट सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द पेपर न्यूमेरिकल मॉड्यूल्स क्लियर किया मैंने इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लानिंग रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग एंड इंश्योरेंस प्लानिंग तीन मॉड्यूल क्लियर किया है यू वन हैव योर ओन प्रैक्टिस यू वन ज्वाइन अ फॉर्म एंड वर्क विद दैन Well, starting with my career, like eventually I'll obviously do the freelancing part. Work with a firm yeah. on some experience, and then after, maybe after yes, yeah, after but after that I'll do freelancing. But the experts in the field suggest that you should not wait for a job. So definitely, like uh, for now, I'm looking for the placements for that part only. Like uh, the companies have started com coming, and we are appearing for the interviews and all. So like for three four years, I'll be I'll work as an employer. I'll I'll obviously learn as much as possible, and uh, because that gives you a base. All of you in. enjoy number crunching way too much and would rather just stick to financial planning than look at anything else best of luck to all of you thank in you your so endeavor much. to earn a cfp certification thank you so much for talking thank to you. us right and as promised now mahesh with us to take all your queries you got several of them coming in mahesh first of course this is a field that's sort of just about opening up you know like you were talking earlier that you know my investments in sort of post office schemes or fixed deposit were perhaps the only options i had earlier now you know you wherever you look whether it's you know magazines tv radio etc ads on mutual funds are everywhere so the market's opening up but as you're saying slowly but surely it still has an open up you know we are still a very uh saving nation which focuses on investments which are safe mm. but never beats inflation mm. so uh, it's invariably fixed deposits or uh, or at best postal national saving certificates that is where majority of india still saves mm. but with the inflation galloping at at 8 9% that won't work mm. so unless we we change the way we look at money and how fungible it is and where it can earn you the maximum returns uh, you not make it work for you right and financial planning is the way to go mm. but india still hasn't 
opened up to financial planning. Mm. You know, we as in a third person who sort of comes in yes, and, and says, looks "This at your is money. right." Yes. Looks at your money yes. and tells you how, which is where how you to go. do it. Right? Is uh, you're not even open to it. Mm. So most planners, even today, are are basically insurance agents. Mm. Insurance is the only investments we have in right. our mind. Right. And कुछ हो गया तो कुछ हो गया तो उतना ही है बियॉन्ड दैट वॉट इज अ म्यूचुअल फंड नॉट मोर देन हाफ अ परसेंट इज अ कंट्री इन्वेस्ट इन म्यूचुअल फंड स्टॉक मार्केट आर 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 इन्वेस्ट पीपल इन अबाउट फोर परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल सेवर्स हैव अ सर्टन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन स्टॉक मार्केट सो आर मार्केट्स आर वेरी नेजेंट वेन इट कम्स टू देयर पोटेंशियल सो फाइनेंशियल प्लानिंग एज अ डोमाइन विल विल पिक अप एज द इकोनॉमी ऑल्सो ग्रो Uh, like mutual funds were not heard of before uh, 1991 before mm-hmm. liberalization there was only mm-hmm. uti now they're yeah right. now they're everywhere right. at least they're visible right. and financial planning as a domain is exceptionally important because at each stage of your life mm-hmm. your financial goals are different mm-hmm. your needs are different right so an expert comes in and tells you what is an ideal combination of saving products for you right so you think in your 20s 30s 40s so on and so forth like your needs are changing yes. perhaps as you grow older you want to do more for your health or yeah. you you know and I, right you you might have a house buying goal or right. children's goal right so it's almost like having a family doctor right exactly right so let's get started ashwarya has the first question go ahead ashwarya My name is Ishvara Jain. I would like to ask you, how is financial planning as a career? Right. So you know, we were just talking. We we've heard Ashwarya's question there. We were just talking about how it's just about opening up. But she seems someone who is, who could perhaps be keen. So what would you say to her? See, ideally, what she must do is that in in before even she goes for a certified financial planning uh, certification, mm. she must have a basic degree in commerce, mm. or a degree in an MBA hmm. an MBA is more suitable because you understand the business dynamics of it better hmm. with a finance okay. specialization okay. once she has that she understands different products hmm. different aspects of saving different between investments in savings so on and so hmm. forth hmm. then once she gets a cfp along in her in her fold her ability to assess you as an investor hmm. and advise you becomes very good i see instead of so let an mba complement Yes, an MBA acts as a base, right. and CFB then acts as a tool to make you a good advisor. I see. Okay. Well, Ashwarya, I do hope that helps. I have another question here, saying after doing my certification in financial planning, what is the better option: joining a financial planning firm or starting your own practice? I would imagine a firm to get some experience. No. What would you say? No. I see. No. That's interesting. Because uh, you know, when you when you start a firm. Hmm. because i'm interesting my money to you mm. i would i would expect you to have a certain amount of experience right. with handling money right so unless you have that level of credibility in right. the society in which you operate right. i may not interest that be to difficult you. Right. yes right. so it's also imperative mm. that you work in a firm mm. get an experience you know that will i advise someone who is in his 20s for more stocks mm. will i advise someone who is in his 40s for more debentures Are questions which you you do by trial and error. Correct. Spread over ten, twelve years. Right. Once you do that, you will have built up and a then, ocean of contacts. Right. Of clients who will have the faith in you over ten, five, ten years. So the trust factor again, because there's money involved. The trust factor being being very key, yes. and you know that's that's an important thing to keep in mind. Get that experience. Work with the big names. Work with the big guys. There are of course so many big guns now in this field. You can take your pick, and uh, like Mahesh saying, the sector just of course just about opening up. So that of course should help. Ananya has the next question. Let's hear from Ananya. I'm currently pursuing my postgraduate diploma in financial planning. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if this is my current correct field because I have uh, issues with interacting with people, but I'm quite good with the technical part. So, uh, is it the right way to go for me, or should I switch to a CFA? Right. So that's that's interesting, and I say that she sort of assessed herself very well and very honestly. Is you know, so it maybe people skills not being that good. And it matters a lot. It matters a lot. Yeah, yes. You know, you're asking me yeah, to give my money to you. Yeah, you're asking me to trust me. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and, so and what would you say? What What would you recommend? You know, if if she has a major people, and so also it can be acquired. It is not as if you can't acquire right. people's skills. But if she genuinely feels that uh, she doesn't have it in her to interact with people and and get their trust in her. Then she definitely is better off doing a CFA. I see. Because the CFA uh, involves lot of high-end technical analysis. Okay. Which is essential for doing financial products for any consumer. Okay. So it's one step behind a financial planner. I see. Without a good financial product, a planner has nothing to sell. Right. 
So if so she they, has that ability, each, each other. other. So that therefore, that so is there's no that harm in doing a CFA, and it's a good certification. Okay, Shubham has the next question. Go ahead, Shubham. How CFP will enhance a career? There is no other way to go about it. First and foremost, is there? Yeah, Isn't no, that there is the minimum that yes, you perhaps yes. have to do? Whether you take not mandatory right now, but it will become mandatory in the coming days. So right now, what is mandatory, Mahesh? Nothing, honestly. So I can just go out there and say, and I know, I know how to. Yes. What does a stockbroker do? What does a stockbroker has been doing in this country for ages? Hmm. Uh, he has a skill, hmm. and he sells the skills to you. Hmm. So per se, the certification really didn't matter hmm. until very recently. Right. Now, because of SEBI and Krizil playing a larger role, mm. uh, they are making it mandatory in the coming days. Right. So, the, let's just let's quickly recap this. The top three things that you need to keep in mind if this is for you. Of course, first, as always with anything, have genuine interest in all of this. Even though certification not essential at the moment, go for it because yep. very soon it will be it and will that might yeah. just yeah. be a uh, sort of a big stumbling block and get training with a well-known financial planning yeah. firm. So the top three things that you need to keep in mind there. And let us know how it goes for you. Thanks very much, Mahesh, for coming in and uh, sharing your time and thoughts with us. Well, on that note, we're slipping into a quick break now. Coming up after that, how to make a financial plan? Well, Abhishek is going to try and crack that. <laughs> So what does it take to draw up a good financial plan? We've just discussed that your age, of course, is one thing that could determine how your financial needs change, your desire to invest, your ability to invest, and of course, your appetite for risks. All of this will have an impact on the financial plan that is drawn up for you. So how do those who are the experts in this field go about it? What goes into the making of a good, sound financial plan that works for you? Abhishek Singh tries to find out. We're at Mr. Surya Bhatia's office, an FPSP certified financial planner. While we were discussing financial planning with Mr. Bhatia, he agreed to quickly structure a financial plan for two of my short to midterm goals, a vacation and a house at the age of 40. Uh, what would you advise me? Where should I invest my money so that I can achieve these two financial goals of mine? The very interesting needs you have, huh? At your age, you want to plan for a house 15 years down the line. Kudos to you, huh? But coming to your first, the earnest need which you have of going for the vacation at your age. Um, we need to have some numbers overhead if I can just justify that. Okay, so for example, if I can say put aside 20 grand every month. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and how much, how much will you want to spend on that holiday of yours? Uh, say about one and a half lakhs. So out of this 20,000, which is not bad, you can actually try to save around 4,000 rupees a month, which goes into the saving for creating a corpus for your vacation. This goal or this need of yours, we typically bracket as a luxury goal. If we do that, this entitles me to ask you to invest this money in a higher risk asset class. Let's okay. say equity for a minute. Okay. So you use mutual funds as a route, put mm -hmm. equities as your monthly investments through the SIPs route, systematic investment plans, and start mm -hmm. investing through those. Right. Um, the flip side, let's talk about that also for a minute. Right. Now, if you do investments in equities, you have, could have three scenarios. Let's say I target an X amount of percentage as expected return. Assuming you are able to match it, it's easy. Spend your money, have a nice holiday. If you are not able to achieve your holiday, assuming let's say you want to go to Singapore, I'm taking an example over here. I'm saying you don't go to Singapore. You end up going to maybe Goa. You will, you will kill me for it. No, <laughs> Singapore. But that's still you can take it. Okay. Now the other side, the last one, if you are able to overachieve this, you may want to go to US. The idea is you will still be able to achieve your need without hampering your purpose behind it. Right. That's what we categorize ourselves as luxury needs. Okay. Coming to the more serious need of yours, which is the housing. Now, as the housing, assuming this is the first house of yours, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes, yes. It it's is the first house of be yours. First house. So, first house we always categorize as a very, very safe need. And it's a very sacrosanct need for you. You want to achieve it come what may. Let me put it this way. Yes. But because you have the luxury of 15 years with you, you're 25 and you want to have it in 40 years. So you can look at buying a house and but you, the only catch is, sorry, the only catch is you need to be consistent and serious about this saving. Right. Uh, so, yeah. 
Uh, Mr. Bhatia, tell me something. Where, what kind of instrument should I be investing my money in? Uh, because as far as my house is concerned, I wouldn't want to lose that money no matter what. So, where should I invest my money? For the vacations, I just told you, you should look at equity. Okay. Because that's yeah, the call right. of the day. Uh, for your house, because it's a long term need, while you want to have this money very secure, you also want to ensure that the, that the money which earns for you beats inflation. A pure debt investment like your fixed deposits, I'm not putting taxation right now in the picture, your PPFs, your uh, post office instruments, mm. uh, will just be able to at best match the inflation. They will not be able to beat inflation for sure. So to beat that, you need to have exposure to equity. And the reason why we say this is because you have a long horizon. 15 years is not small, huh? Mm -hmm. So because you have that period, you look at 25, 30% of equity exposure mm -hmm. to give you that kicker to your portfolio. Right. So say 20 to 35% of my savings go into equity, of rest the, go into yeah, right. debt-based instruments. Yes. Yes. And 15 years down the line, if nothing terrible happens, I would be able to achieve that financial goal of and mine. Remember to call me on your house for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 I will. And all right, so thank you, Mr. Bhatia. Well, let's hope all of that worked for you. Remember, we've gone over all the key things you need to keep in mind if financial planning is your cup of tea. Write in and tell us what you thought of the show and what else you'd like to have covered by us. So we are of course available on Facebook. You can also reach us on our NDTV social page or tweet us at NDTV Mindspace. Well, it's a wrap uh, from all of us then. Goodbye. Thanks so much for watching.